Hey, everybody. Welcome back. It's Claire Moon. And today I wanted to talk to you about all of the planets that are transiting Sagittarius and opposing Mars. I just want to talk about those transits today. And then I'm actually going to go rising sign by rising sign and do a horoscope. So at some point in this video or after I post it, I'm going to get little time stamps, but um, bear with me. That might take me uno momento to get those time stamps up. Um, but I will be starting with Aries as is convention and ending with Pisces. So you can try to find, scrub along and find your sign. But before we get into the rising sign horoscopes, I want to just give like a general overview of what to expect, what energies we can expect to be dealing with. And in particular, if you can see my screen now, we can see Sagittarius has the sun, Venus and Mercury, and actually the moon right now as well, all in Sagittarius. And they are going to be opposing Mars, who's been holding down the fort in Gemini for, well, since August. Um, if we want to go to the exact dates that this stuff is all happening, and granted, I do use sign-based aspects, so I don't think we have to wait, you know, until planets are on the degree exactly to be feeling these things. I think we already are. Um, these themes that I'm going to be discussing are already here. But in particular, Mercury on the 29th of November is going to be exactly opposing the very next day then it is venus's turn on the 30th of november so if we you know move our clock ahead here we can see on the 29th of november we have mercury that purple guy there opposing mars at 19 degrees the very next day it's venus's turn and then if we just keep moving along um, by the time we get to December 6th, December 7th, we come to our full, it's going to be a full moon, of course, you know, it's not just the sun opposing, but it just so happens that the timing works out that this is also the time that the moon is going to be with, with Mars and Gemini. And so we're going to get this full moon, um, that I'll probably end up also discussing in the course of this video. Maybe, maybe I won't, maybe it'll be in the December forecast, which is coming up. Um, yeah, maybe I should plug some things. So on the, the 28th, that's a Monday, this next Monday, 28th of November, I'm doing my December forecast. So tune in, um, that's going to be live here on YouTube. Um, and of course, if you like this video, if you're getting anything out of it, please hit subscribe, hit that like button. That really helps me uh, get visibility, helps me stay in business, helps me keep this ship afloat. So please, please help. <laughs> it helped me by hitting, hitting all the buttons. Um, okay, so a couple just general, general things to, to consider about these oppositions that are, that are happening. They are mutual applications. So in general, whenever a planet is applying, is moving toward another planet, that's when we generally feel the energies the most. And in this case, we also have Mars who is moving backwards. And in this case, this doesn't always happen like this, where the planets are both applying to each other. We're getting a mutual application. Um, and I'm not sure, I, I want to say this is a, an Austin Copicism. Like, I think I heard it from Austin first, that it's like you can consider it almost like a head-on collision between two cars versus like one rear-ending the other. Uh, so we can, you know, even just thinking about how physics works, you know, force equals mass times acceleration, right? Oh boy, we are going into big nerd territory. But I mean, I think just intuitively we can imagine that a head-on collision is going to be more impactful than just a simple, you know, our, our usual case where only one planet is moving into the other really as it, that other one is moving away. All to say, this is a pretty, this is a pretty energetic set of configurations that are happening here. And they're just going to be louder. It just makes everything a little bit louder. Um, so in general, I think, I mean, I've already been feeling all of this fiery energy in Sagittarius. I'm, I was just saying over on Twitter, I was tweeting about it. Um, I usually am kind of an introvert and I myself have actually been out like making plans with people doing stuff that I normally wouldn't feel like doing. So hopefully you're getting that very fiery tone as well. That that's actually kind of constructive and helpful. Um, but what is, you know, what are these places about? Because in opposition we can think about an opposition in a few ways. And I think these are some of the themes that are going to be coming up as we talk about these planets bumping into each other um, or their energies bumping into each other, so to speak. 
it can be hard balancing two things. You know, they're, they're on different sides of the zodiacal wheel. They have very different properties. They do have some things in common, um, but overall they, they don't exactly meet eye to eye Gemini and Sagittarius on everything. And so we're trying to hold space for two very different energies. We're trying to balance two very different places. And over the next two weeks, that's when we're really going to be balancing these things out. Um, now, in general, that can be fine. You know, I think there's plenty of times in life where we have to balance things that don't seem to really go together very well, or maybe we just don't have the hours in the day. We don't have the bandwidth, the energy to be putting equal effort into these disparate areas. It can be as simple and as boring as that. Um, but at the same time, I think with Mars involved, Mars can add a little bit of irritation, a little bit of inflammation, and overall we've got fire and we've got air. And these both, these elements are external, they're externally emitting elements. They want to say things, they want to think things, they want to share these things. They're going to, instead of keeping them inside, they're going to want to go out with them. So especially being around the holidays. And now I'm a little too late because I'm recording this like on a holiday, basically. Um, you know, if you're already with your family and you're missing this video, sorry, <laughs> but this, these things still come in handy over the next week in that if there are two opposing ideas, opposing viewpoints, just opposing things in our life, it can be a little grady or irritating or conflicty. Um, there can be conflict. There can be easily escalating conflict, I think. So if you don't want to burn bridges, I would recommend being careful, being a little bit more temperate in your approach. And I think that's going to actually help us get through this time. Um, I always talk about slowing down, you know, that's more of my mindfulness approach coming into my astrology. I'm always talking about sleeping on it. And this is more of that. I'm going to be saying that a bunch. So surprise, <laughs> you know, put it, cross it off your bingo board. Um, so anyway, let me look at my notes here. So Sagittarius in all, or all in all, we have these themes of enthusiasm, optimism, missions, you know, wanting to act on things. Fire compels us to want to act. And we get like really, especially in that first decan, that first 10 degrees of Sagittarius, it's super enthusiastic. It is very excited. It does not want to wait. It would like to speed off into the sunset, if you will, gallop, gallop, gallop. Um, in general, we've got a place that is ruled by Jupiter. So we have these Jupiterian principles of belief, knowledge, truth, knowledge seeking, um, philosophies, things like that. Uh, and then also more of the fun parts, you know, we have parties, we have groups of people, which is always perfect for this time of year. And no matter what holiday you're celebrating, um, getting together with your families, with our friends and having a good time is it literally aligns with Sagittarius and Sagittarius themes. So it's pretty perfect. Um, over in Gemini, in this area, now, if over in Sagittarius, we are trying to put together a grand theory of something, a grand unified theory. We're trying to coalesce a bunch of facts, information into something we believe to be true. In Gemini, it is all of those little disparate facts. You know, Gemini is more than one. It is a multiplicative place. And Gemini energy just wants to seek more information, but it doesn't really necessarily care where it's coming from. It doesn't necessarily care about all the meaning that's involved with it. It just wants more and more data. Uh, it in that way can be kind of skeptical. It can be our questioning function, which is really, really important, asking good questions. Um, it also, you know, it's going to not, again, like I said, not care so much about bringing it all together. And almost on the opposite end, it's almost like the information we have is never enough. You know, we want more, we want more, we want more. Um, we can also see this mercurial idea of trickery, you know, coming into Gemini. It, Gemini can be pretty funny. I think Sagittarius can too, and it's different ways, but Gemini is also adaptable. Um, it can be really good at multitasking, but in that same way, it can be a little scattered in what it is trying to, trying to take in. It's not going to be really that focused. And then another mercurial thing with Gemini, then we're looking at commerce exchange, 
um, not only just exchanging information in terms of speaking, but also listening. You know, Gemini sometimes is associated with the ears and with hearing. So speaking, he, listening, exchanges, commerce, all of those things. So if you are doing any like, if you're doing any deals, if you're doing any, you know, buying and selling for Black Friday, things like that, um, I don't, you know, I, I'm trying not to be in that consumerist place. If you are, no judgment, no, no shade on that. But I will say, if we want to look at this place of commerce, this place of exchange in Gemini, and we look at how the ruler is doing Mercury, honestly, not so hot. Uh, Mercury has a hard time in Sagittarius, not because there's anything wrong with Mercury, but it's not really given the tools that it needs with all that really fine discernment and all those really small details that Mercury likes to look at. Uh, so if you are looking at you know, buying something, purchasing something, especially if it's really expensive, make sure that you're reading all the fine print on the coupon. Make sure you're reading all the little details with the discounts to make sure you're understanding it right before you put your money down. Okay. So that's like practical tip number one. Um, this is also, you know, in our quest for knowledge and our quest for discernment, we're trying to get the big picture we're also trying to have the details. And that is sometimes we can get lost in all of that. And when I think about two people coming together around, say, a dinner table, discussing a topic, maybe a serious topic, like we, like, unfortunately, we like to do during the holidays. Um, I think things can get lost in translation. I think there's a high potential right now and for, I mean, for the next two weeks until Mercury goes into Capricorn, I think there's a high potential for misunderstanding. I think there's a high potential for our messages to come out one way and be received in an entirely different way that we didn't really intend. So just coming back to what I had mentioned about conversations escalating really quickly enthusiasm, maybe getting a little out of bounds. Uh, all of those things can lead to just conversations that devolve into nonsense, into argument, into debate. So I always say, you know, it's not about not having difficult, you know, conversations. It's not about avoiding conflict. We don't want to do that. Sometimes shit needs to be said. Am I right? But now is not Mercury is not in its best position to be doing all of those things. And on the other end of this interaction, we've got Mars in Mercury's place, really rattling cages and like, and, and just almost feverishly wanting to say its piece and feverishly wanting to get more information and, and having that information, maybe not even feel like it's enough, you know? So just be really careful with the conversations you're having over the next week or two. Uh, they're going to happen. Like, no, it's not like we're all going to not be having conversations over the next two weeks, but let's take some care and discernment, like extra, um, in trying to do that. And that includes, you know, when we can wait on our messaging, when we can, you know, take a beat before we say something, deciding like, do I actually need to say this? Is this something that needs to be said? Is the timing there for me to say this right now? Does it even make sense to say it in this moment today or tomorrow? Um, and, and just like, I, I don't like the idea of like tone policing, you know, that's not what I'm talking about here. But at the same time, I, like I had mentioned, there's like a high risk of, our, our message coming out in a way we didn't intend or being picked up in a way that we didn't intend. So just making sure that our tone is, is reflecting where we're coming from. Um, and I think sometimes when we get really enthusiastic and we feel this sense of urgency to say something, maybe we've been impatient and we've already been waiting a long time to have a discussion or say something. Um, that's actually when we're like at highest risk of screwing it up. <laughs> so uh, that's my little like Mercury, Mars oppositional theme discussion. Then when we're looking at Venus and Mars opposite each other. And again, like these are perfecting on November 28th, November 29th. Um, once they're coming, it's very much Venus wanting to just have a good time. Venus just wants to connect. She wants to have a jovial party. It's Sagittarius season, you know, let's bring together everybody and, and just, yeah, I don't know, have some wine. It's very jovial, very Jupiterian. Uh, 
But at the same time, Mars is over here, maybe having its own thoughts, its own ideas about how things should be going. Uh, and that can bring a little bit of conflict. So these energies of an opposition, they don't have to be conflict, though. I've, I've kind of been focusing on that. That's one bucket of themes that we could see, but that's not going to be for everybody. Um, I think the other big way that these oppositional energies are going to be coming out is just going to be in terms of, I have to pay attention to so many things over here, and I have to put in a ton of effort over in this very different department. How do I have energy for all of that? How do I have the attention and the focus and the bandwidth to give all of these places their due attention. So I think that that's going to be the other really big theme. And, you know, just because these issues are here, you know, now uh, for a couple of weeks until, you know, we're done with that first week of December, I don't think that's going to be the case necessarily after that. So if things do feel really difficult to just give everybody or everything the attention it needs right now, just hang in there for a couple of weeks. And I think once we start to enter into Capricorn season, things are going to feel more manageable in general. Um, okay. I think that is all I wanted to talk about in terms of just like the general setup for this. So let's get into actual rising sign stuff. Let's start with Aries. So what I'm going to be doing here, and this is my little equation that I'm that I'm working with, just to show my math a little bit. We're going to be working with the house topics that these areas are falling in. Oops, not that. For Aries, it's going to be the third and the ninth. And these are the, the life topics that are going to be calling a lot of our attention and kind of scattering us and splitting us off in different directions. And then at the same time, I'm going to be focusing on Jupiter and where Jupiter is to try to get some kind of help, to try to get some kind of, you know, maybe wisdom or internal internal advice for ourselves based on where Jupiter is, because this is forming a sign-based, well, I guess in, in modern astrology, more like a T-square is how they call this. Uh, but for me, I'm seeing Jupiter as this place of adjustment you know, if it is so hard to reconcile in the case of Aries rising, third house topics and ninth house topics, which I'll get into, I think that Jupiter is going to speak to a place where if we make an adjustment there, if we actually pay attention to what Jupiter is talking about over in Pisces, that could give us some clues as to how to manage and how to decide, like, you know, do I put more effort in in Gemini or keep, you know, spitting my tires over in Gemini, or do I just enjoy the ride over in Sagittarius for now? Um, so a little bit more specifically for you, Aries Rising, we have, you've been putting in a lot of effort into your third house of, you know, maybe siblings, extended relatives, maybe they've been calling your attention a lot. Uh, maybe your local neighborhoods, your local spaces, maybe you've just been having to run a lot of errands lately since August. Uh, more likely, maybe learning new things in the third house. We learn new things. We have foundational knowledge um, and just communication in general, just how we communicate is a third house topic. It's a place of the mind, you know, uh, looking anciently, the place of, um, it was the joy of the moon and the moon was anciently thought of sometimes as the mind. Now you are actually Mars, which is, this is an interesting case because Mars is you, Aries rising. We can say that a general significator for you in the chart would be Mars. And it's just like putting in a lot of effort even into your own speaking, into saying what you want to say. Um, so this is very assertive, very direct type of spoken energy. And then up here in the ninth, we've got worldview, we've got our beliefs, we've got long distance travel. Uh, it, it's advanced learning, advanced education, as well as mass communication. So not just your daily, you know, in the third house, it's our daily familiar communications. It can even be social media, uh, you know, the people you talk to daily at your job, um, just the people you talk with regularly. And with this opposition, I'm wondering, you know, a few themes that I was thinking about with this is, you know, maybe we're having to put a lot of effort into learning a few new things, but what are we actually enthusiastic about? What are we excited for up in Sagittarius? Maybe we would rather be advancing our education in something we already know about 
You know, maybe we wanted to take this one topic into the next level, but we're actually forced to, to backpedal and focus on some more foundational work. Um, also, it could be maybe you're trying to mass communicate something. Maybe you're trying to publish something. Uh, and that something could be words. It could be music. It could be art. It could be anything you're kind of sharing up here on a mass scale. And maybe it's hard to reconcile what you want to share and the way you want to share it with how it's coming out. <laughs> you know, uh, I think sometimes with Mars, we can get a little sharp in our delivery. And we know that, you know, maybe up here, based on what is believed based on our worldview, that's not the approach that we want to take. Uh, so in that case, you know, what might Jupiter be saying in the 12th? Maybe there's some hidden things we've been learning about ourselves, maybe some really internal knowledge about, you know, how our mind can feel the most at peace. And whatever allows you to have that peace of mind, I think that's going to help decide you know, do I just fire off with whatever I want to say and just hope it lands well? Or do I maybe look at my overarching worldview and see if what I'm saying aligns with that? Um, if it is that you are learning a bunch of new things or you're having to really focus on some foundational learning, you know, making sure that you're not spreading yourself too thin. In the 12th house, I can see a bit of self undoing maybe in Jupiterian excess. So um, really trying to focus, which I know is like so rude to even suggest right now, but that means that is that it is actually the time more than not to, to focus more than ever, you know? So choose what's super important to you, what's going to give you peace of mind. You're not, you know, whatever choice you want to make where it's not going to, you're not going to overdo it. Um, even if it's just intellectually or internally, I think that is the move. That is the move. So that is Aries rising. Now, if we want to go to Taurus rising, this falls into your, your first, or sorry, I keep messing that up, into your second and your eighth houses. And this one is really interesting to me because it's very much your stuff and other people's stuff. And so I'm not sure what conversations, if any, will be had. This might be more of an internal process for you. Um, you know, I'm always in astrology. I'm looking for internal manifestations and external manifestations. But in the second and the eighth, what comes up for me a lot is reciprocity in relationship. What am I giving? What am I getting? You know, is it sustainable? Is it fair? And maybe especially since August, you've been toiling away trying to make a, make a dollar, maybe in the second house of your money, stuff, and things. You've been putting in a lot of effort, maybe in a lot of different ways to try to bring in money from a lot of different areas. Um, more abstractly, maybe you've been putting in a lot of effort into developing skills that you eventually will use in the, the, the pursuit of making money. <clears throat> Other things other people's stuff is in the eighth. And maybe a lot is being asked of you, or maybe you're enthusiastic in terms of collaborating with others. You know, we've also got Venus relationships up here right now. We've got Mercury who is bringing all of your skills and your talents and your money and resources into the other, into collaboration with the other. So there could even be like, this is what I want to create and, and make in my foundations, my bank account, but maybe I have to do these things to collaborate with others at the same time. So how do we make sure that there's enough bandwidth for both making sure that you're getting your needs met while at the same time that your collaborations or how you're exchanging resources with others, that that part of your life is going okay. Um, it could be trying to reconcile your bank account with your debts, just very, very practically speaking. Um, but if there are any really prickly conversations that that are are coming up, like, you know, maybe I'm not being fairly compensated for my time, my cognitive labor, my emotional labor. Um, maybe I am really enthusiastic about whatever I want to pursue with someone, but it doesn't really make sense with what I need. You know, that could be the thing too. It could be like a really internal conflict. Then what I would want us to look at is Jupiter in the 11th. You know, Jupiter has recently stationed direct. So we've gotten Jupiter into this place where it's been learning a lot. It's been filling in some gaps with its knowledge while it's been moving retrograde. Uh, but now it's, it's 
stationed. It's going to be moving forward pretty, pretty soon. Uh, if not already, it's pretty much not moving right now, but it does speak to me of having a bit more clarity in that Jupiterian, that Pisces area of the sky. So in the 11th, it's like, what do we actually aspire toward? If you could choose, you know, what do I want to become? What do I want to do while I'm here on this earth? What is important to me and meaningful for me? That might help you answer these questions. That might help you guide yourself on uh, if there is a mismatch with um, reciprocity in a relationship or you being fairly compensated, really asking yourself, what is important to you? What's meaningful to you? And what do you aspire to be? And are these exchanges of resources actually in line with that? That would be, that would be my advice for Taurus risings. Okay. Gemini rising. Now it's here. <laughs> now it's in the first and the seventh. So you know, Mars in the first, especially if you were born in the daytime with the sun above the horizon, this might be kind of a spicier time for you. You might be feeling the heat, uh, might be feeling your anger, feeling your resentment a little bit more directly. Uh, if you have been noticing that you are easily irritated, easily inflamed, that could be Mars in the first house. And again, this is not new energy. You've been dealing with this for a few months already. Uh, it's it's also self-assertion, self-advocacy. So this is a time when it might be easier for you to assert your ideas, assert your, your identity, be like, yep, this is who I am. This is what I think. This is what I want to say about it. Um, that's the energy going on in Gemini. Now, in the place of the other, in the seventh house, there's a lot of activity happening. Your attention is maybe being drawn toward the other. Uh, maybe there's a lot of relating right now. You know, of course, again, we're in the holidays, so it makes a lot of sense. Uh, and we might have to really make that balance between what, you know, who do I want to be in this situation or what do I want to say in this situation? What do I want to share versus how do we just have a good time? You know, not saying that what you have to say, Gemini rising is, is bad or not good to say, but it might feel like it's in conflict or not reconcilable with the other right now or with whatever is going on with other people right now. And what I would wonder is looking at Jupiter, you know, what's your, what do you want your public image to be? Uh, what do you want your legacy to be? When people think about who you are, what do you want them to think about? What's really meaningful for you in that regard? Uh, what, what is important to you? in how you are perceived out in the world. And that might help you answer this question of, you know, how much weight am I going to put on each side of this opposition? Is this going to be more about me today? Or is it going to be about the other today? Or can I do even better than that and find space for all of us to kind of be in the same room together uh, without conflict or, you know, hopefully without too much irritation. So that I know that was a quick one, but that that's what I've been seeing a lot with Gemini rising. Um, you know, and I guess in general too, we're just thinking about identity, thinking about presentation. It could be that we're just putting in a lot more effort, you know, Mars being effort into how we're presenting in the world. Um, even the the first house can be health. You know, it's the first house is your mind, body, and spirit. It's, it's partly your, your body. And how can I make sure that I'm advocating for what I need and for, you know, my, what, what affirms my identity without getting lost in the other and getting, you know, maybe abandoning myself for the other. We don't want that to happen either. So, um, that might be the case of, you know, does my identity not feel like I can exude all of it in this space? Um, how do we, you know, it, how do we express ourselves with the other in a way that is sustainable and harmonious, at least harmonious enough. So then moving on to cancer rising, we have cancer putting Mars in the 12th and all these Sagittarian transits in the sixth house. And this is very much the axes of 
how our health is going or not. Disease and recovery from disease in the sixth house. A lot of times in the sixth house, we have our wellness, our routines for wellness, uh, exercise routines. It's also just a lot of our daily obligations and chores. You know, I have to take care of myself every day. I have to take care of you have kids. You got to take care of them every day pets, got to water the plants, all of those six house things. If you have uh, just survival work or just your job, your, your bill paying job, that could be a sixth house routine. And you might be having a lot of attention being drawn there. You might have a lot going on, a lot of people asking you for stuff, asking for your time. And maybe you've got projects going on at work that you are really excited about or really enthusiastic about. Uh, maybe there's a bunch of you know work things happening day, day in, day out, lots of emails, things like that. At the same time, you might have a desire to more be working on yourself, maybe in private, uh, putting an effort into more of your internal landscape. And how do we hold space for all of that? Um, maybe going back to the, the working world type of example, maybe Mars is doing some behind the scenes efforts in the 12th. I imagine someone who maybe has a couple projects going on that Maybe their colleagues don't know about. Maybe they've got a few irons in the fire. And at the same time, you've got eight people at work asking you for eight different things. And they might not know that you're doing all of those behind the scenes projects or something like that. So then using your ability to communicate really directly to, you know, I know cancer rising, more of a, we don't necessarily want to approach things head on, but it might actually be in your best interest to just, you know, be really open with what you have going on so that you're able to not spread yourself too thin. Um, Mercury, I had mentioned that it's not in its best place for doing Mercury things like communication. I think a lot of times we can just go too fast and we can forget to clue people in on things communications kind of fall through the cracks. So just make sure that you're watching your inbox, make sure that you're, you know, watching that because Mercury does rule your third house of, of uh, daily communications as well. Um, but then more in the health notion of things might be a lot of mental restlessness, you know, the 12th house being more hidden health matters. Um, 2000 years ago, maybe people were thinking more uh, that hidden health was more like mental health, emotional health, spiritual health. Maybe you've been putting in a lot of effort into that, which doesn't leave as much room for, you know, lifting weights at the gym or so doing your squats at the squat rack, Sagittarius with your thighs. <laughs> so how do we hold space for maintaining our external physical body health, and then also having space for our internal maybe mental, emotion, emotional, spiritual health stuff. Um, when we're thinking about how to navigate these challenges in having space for all these areas, Ju Jupiter's been in the ninth house and maybe you've been getting more information um, about different beliefs, maybe worldviews that you haven't considered before. Uh, maybe there's some long distance travel thrown in there as well. That doesn't seem like it helps, but that might help give you some information on how to handle your day-to-day -day obligations and duties. Um, maybe we want to handle it in a way that aligns with what we believe about the world. Um, maybe you're having to do some mass communicating projects. Maybe you're having to publish things. And that is going to affect, you know, how much bandwidth can I give to these sixth house folks? And also needing to have time for, you know, maybe putting an effort into myself behind the scenes. So uh, letting letting those things fall into place, maybe based on what you believe about the world, which sounds kind of abstract, but I think a lot of times we just, we get a list of stuff to do and we're like, I got to get that done and I got to do this and I got to do that. And then we forget about like, oh, I actually wanted to live a life where it doesn't suck. And I'm not just like looking at this to-do list all day long, you know, don't forget the wider picture of the life as well. Um, while we are, you know, maybe buried in details of obligation and duty. Yeah, hopefully that makes sense. So then moving on to Leo rising, <clears throat> this is going to fall in your 11th and 5th houses. And this is very much like, what are you creating and who are you sharing it with? Uh, 11th house is more communities, larger networks of people. It's what you aspire toward hopes and dreams. 
the fifth house is what you're creating. And if you're not making babies, you know, if it doesn't have to do with your children or child rearing, it could have to do with just creative expression. Um, and in the fifth house in Sagittarius, there's a lot of enthusiasm for self-expression and literally because the ruler of the first house, the sun is you and it's right in there in the fifth. Um, if you're not super enthusiastic right now about creating something or expressing yourself in some way, it could be that you just want to rest. It could be that you want to just chill out for once. If it's not that, it could very well be having to put in a lot of attention or just being really like enthusiastic in the attention that you're giving to your relationships with children in your life um, and child rearing and all of that. At the same time, there's a lot of effort going on in the community or the larger communities and networks, you know, maybe um, your larger groups of friends have been really busy lately. Maybe you've been invited to a bunch of a bunch of events. Maybe you're out there with your colleagues having to go to conferences, things like that. And maybe that is taking you away from these fifth house things that we would rather be doing even uh, maybe more than what Mars is motivated by up in the 11th. Uh, maybe you've been putting in a lot of effort into these areas recently, uh, into these areas of community networks. Maybe you've been putting a lot of effort into certain aspirations that you have, but now something else is drawing your focus in the fifth. You know, maybe it's some other side art project that you've been wanting to do this whole time. And maybe it doesn't exactly align with the aspirations I've had so far, but you know, maybe that's okay. Maybe a, a temporary detour Maybe a temporary side quest is just fine, you know? Um, so just again, it could be conflict. It doesn't have to be. It could be that what you're creating doesn't necessarily jive with the communities that you're a part of. Maybe the kind of art that you like to make, maybe that's different than the other communities that you're you're networking with and it's not anything that you would share with them. Or, you know, maybe... A very common example is like, if I have kids, I'm not going to have as much time for friend groups. Like that's just kind of how it goes. Uh, so it could be a bit of a, a mismatch or a seemingly unreconcilable thing temporarily for now going on between these areas of life. Um, but I would say, you know, if this is an issue of creative expression, let yourself do it. I think that it's going to be really identity affirming, even if it's different than what you've been pursuing so far, you know, just let yourself experiment with it. I think that's the point of the fifth is that we have fun there <laughs> and that it doesn't have to be so serious and so focused on some product or some final result. Um, and then one other thing that can happen here in the fifth is romance, sex and romance in your sex life. And maybe something about that is drawing your attention and maybe that is taking you away from some of these 11th house groups. So let's say maybe you and your, your spouse, mouse, want to go on some dates. Maybe there hasn't been enough date nights and there needs to be more date nights. Maybe that means that you have to tell the D&D &D group that you're not going to go on this next campaign. Sorry, nerd example, but it might be having to compromise a little bit here and there. That goes for all of these examples, having to compromise something. Um, and again, this is just a two-week transit. So I think it's totally fine to let Venus, let our, our joy guide us a little bit. Um, also Jupiter, what's Jupiter saying up in the eighth? This has to do with what other people might have to offer to help us, you know? Um, in all of these pursuits, like what am I creating? Who am I sharing it with? What am I you know, having joy about? And what, what groups of people am I involved with? We have to look at other people's resources, maybe your partner's resources. Um, and can you ask other people for help? If you need rest, is, there, is your partner able to help you out more with daily things, with duties, with obligations? Um, any, any help that we can get from the other, it might be a really good time to ask. So look to others and their resources for any kind of help or guidance on, yeah, just getting enough rest, creating, but also, you know, making sure that we still have time for the aspirations and the communities in our lives. Okay. And then we have Virgo rising. So Virgo rising you are going to have this across your fourth and your 10th houses, your fourth house of your private life your home, your dwelling, 
parent relationships, your family, all fourth house stuff, 10th house, your life path, your career, basically. So that classic homework balance thing. You might be really, really busy up here in your career. You might've been really busy with that for several months now, but at this time, you know, and this really goes along with the holiday season as well, you might be drawn down into your private life a little bit more. So even though you've got a ton of stuff to do at work, home is calling, you know, family gatherings are happening. Um, Maybe the dwelling or the home has needed some much needed care and attention that it hasn't been getting. So how do we find space for both of these things? And how do we let ourselves enjoy part of our private life, particularly if we've been working really, really hard on our career or being pulled in a lot of different directions in our career? And can we look to Jupiter in the seventh? What can our partners help us out with? Or what do we want our partners, what do we want our partnerships to look like? Maybe that could be another theme here of like, where do I look for help or where do I look for guidance? Should I be continuing to put in all this effort into my career? Um, I'm having a hard time focusing maybe in my career. Uh, home needs me as well. Maybe I want to be more in my private life, be spending more time with my family. We have to ask, what do I want my partnerships to look like? So if, if partnerships are meaningful to you, important to you, letting that help guide you and what, what would help that partnership look like the partnership that we want. I think that might be a guiding question that you can ask yourself. I know that was short. I think, I think Pisces and Virgo risings, this is one of the more straightforward examples because it's very much just that classic public life, private life work home balance. And that's a really common struggle to balance those places. I don't think that's too complicated. Um, going on to Libra. So now we're, we're getting into some of the same axes that we've already been discussing. This is similar to Aries rising, but now we've got things flip-flopped a little bit. Um, more effort and assertion happening up in the ninth house of advanced learning you know, college, university, long distance travel, uh, mass communication and publishing, religion, worldview, belief. Maybe you've been learning a lot of new things about what you believe about the world, bringing in new information from a lot of different places. Maybe it's been hard to focus on just one thing up here. Um, and at this point, now we're having this two week transit of all these planets really lighting our heart on fire in the third house. Maybe we would rather come home to our local communities. Maybe we'd rather after learning about all these different ways of seeing the world, coming back into our local self, into our familiar experiences and being with what is familiar and being with our, our usual ways of communicating and existing in the world each day. Um, maybe if you've been doing a lot of long distance travel, now it would be, it would be really nice to spend some time in your local space uh, with local people like siblings, extended relatives, people like that, just your your local neighborhood people that you see regularly. Um, if you have been having to put in a lot of effort in terms of advanced education, college, stuff like that, maybe you would rather be going back to basics in some regards and and just enjoying intellectual things that aren't as difficult, <laughs> you know, uh, that could be a thing. So all in all, if there are any prickly inflammatory discussions happening around your holiday dinner table, this is another rising sign. So Aries rising, Libra rising, Gemini rising, Sagittarius rising, those four signs in particular, I think there's a chance for conversations to get really heated, particularly if we're talking about beliefs and worldviews. Um, people get really, really attached to them. As much as mutable signs are good at being adaptable, mutable signs like Sagittarius, Gemini, Virgo, Pisces, they're good at changing. They're good at, at being in a middle space. Humans tend to get pretty attached to their ideas and not everybody has mutable energy in their birth chart. So uh, again, if you're having these more heated discussions and you know maybe you're more jovial about it, maybe you're able to talk about it a little bit more um, a little bit more casually. You know, if, if the other person seems like they're getting really heated, uh, you know, decide whether you want to back off that topic or not. You know, all of this energy with Mars and Gemini, Mars and Gemini is 
you know, it feels like the debate, the debate team coach, you know, the debate team captain, it feels like a lawyer that could really just hound you on a topic. They could just really keep debating and debating, and debating. So again, you can decide if you want to do that or not, but that energy is definitely afoot. Oh, and I don't know, did I, I did not talk about Jupiter with this one. So if we're looking at how to guide us in those, those scenarios or how to navigate that, look to your health. You know, there's only so many hours in a day and we can only learn so many things, communicate so many things before it starts to affect our health on the daily basis. So what do you want your overall health to look like? What's really important to you in terms of like your day-to-day lived experience? How do I want to feel when I wake up in the morning? Those types of questions of the sixth house. Um, if these conversations are coming up at your money-making job, at your labor, you know, your bill-paying labor job, um, look at what you want that area of life to look like. Uh, do you want to pick a bunch of battles at a place that you have to show up to every day? Depends on your circumstances. So looking to that sixth house of health, wellness, you know, where you are trying to pay the bills to decide how you're going to handle or navigate any conflicts in um, worldview, belief, any ways of communicating or, you know, being asked to learn a lot of different things and being pulled in a lot of different directions intellectually, just making sure that you're not forgetting about your overall health and what you want that area of your life to look like. So moving on to Scorpio rising, we have you, and this is another one where Mars really represents, um, this is, is the, the general significator for Scorpio. And they may have been putting a lot of effort lately into the eighth house of, you know, helping other people with stuff, putting an effort for, for the sake of others. Um, in the eighth house of collaborations, of exchanging resources, there could be some tension. There could be a little bit of irritation or inflammation. Um, perhaps, you know, hopefully this doesn't have to do with loss or deaths or anything like that, but uh, it could be those topics as well. Not saying that any kind of thing like that is going to happen, but sometimes we have to do a lot of little adulty type things relating to mortality, like Oh, you know, the living will, the advanced directives, power of attorney, you know, where's this person's money or inheritance going? Uh, my last eighth house year was a lot of that just like, you know, bookkeeping in terms of finances and mortality. Um, that can be a really common thing with the eighth house. Uh, we can also get um, debt taxes, stuff, just very mundane stuff. And now we're a little bit more enthusiastic. Maybe the heart is more drawn toward focusing on your own needs, your own finances, your own resources. After giving so much and giving and giving and giving, it's kind of like, yeah, but what about what, what I need? You know, what about my bank account? Um, and there might be a bit of a an opposition there, a bit of a a difficulty in balancing these two areas. So we get back into those same things I was talking about with Taurus rising of reci reciprocity, reciprocal, sustainable relationships in this regard. And we might want to have some conversations about that. We might feel really compelled to advocate for ourselves on that, on that regard. And so making sure that the timing is there for those conversations, of course, that you know, because we want to be successful. We want our message to be received. And particularly when we get around these kind of sensitive topics of the eighth, um, anything with money is usually pretty sensitive for a lot of people. We want to make sure that our message is going to be received in the way that we want it to be. And then asking ourselves, you know, oh my gosh, what do I need to maybe rest? What do I need to feel like I have some ounce of pleasure in my life or enjoyment. Um, maybe this is about romance. Maybe it's about, you know, children in your life and what is really meaningful for you and important to you in the fifth house that can help you decide um, how to act and how to, you know, try to cultivate these really sustainable and fair relationships with others. Um, making sure that we're resting, that, you know, again, if you have children in your life of any kind, that that what is meaningful to you there is being taken care of as well and helping guide us because we're having, again, with Jupiter stationing direct, we're getting a really clear, clear idea about what is most important to us in the Pisces area of our charts. 
And Sagittarius rising. Happy birthday. Happy Sagittarius season. Sagittarius. This is, this is, um, this is, this is all about you. This is self-expression town, my friend, your mind, your body, your spirit. Who am I? <laughs> all of those questions of the first house. And it's a time to really appreciate yourself. What do I value about myself? Um, and this is coming after a long time of putting effort into the other, of putting effort into the seventh house of our partnerships, of our relationships. So maybe you've been really focused on that. Maybe you've been having even a hard time focusing on all the different partnerships you have. I know Sagittarius usually has like a gaggle of partners, platonic partners, business partners, best friends, you know, it's more than just a marriage partner. And, um, you know, if you've been putting a lot of effort into that, it might be a nice two weeks to just kind of take a little bit more time for yourself as well. But, you know, how do we keep both up in the air? How do we juggle both of these and keep things moving in both directions. Um, again, there's only so many hours in a day. There's only so much we can do with our bandwidth. Uh, so then looking to our Jupiter in the fourth house, maybe we can get some help from parents. Maybe we can get some help from our home, uh, from just spending some time in our private home, you know, chilling out for once. I know not always the case for Sagittarius, but uh, taking some time to gather some peace of mind in your private home, in your private life, with your family, great for this time of year, uh, that might help you in somehow reconciling all the attention that has been going to the other, but also now all of the attention that you really may be wanting to focus more on yourself. Um, if there is any difficult discussions or um, prickly discussions that are brewing between you and the other, um, again, know that especially with Mars and the seventh, this can speak to the other person being a little fiery. I had mentioned with Gemini rising that, you know, maybe you are feeling more of this like self-advocacy energy, but also maybe a little bit of irritation. This might be the partners in life having a little bit of extra restlessness, maybe a little bit of um, anger, energy, or irritation that they're having a hard time uh, holding space for. So, you know, if people are a little prickly to you at this time, don't take it personally. Um, but also, you know, make sure extra that you're picking your battles because you might come in, you know, as someone who's very jovial and maybe wanting to have a more casual discussion, but the other person might really get heated really quickly. So, uh, just making sure that, that those conversations are timed out really well. Okay. Capricorn rising. So Capricorn, I know you've been putting in a ton of effort then into your sixth house of all of those daily obligations, daily duties. I have to continue to take care of myself, feed myself, bathe myself. If you have children, pets, taking care of them as well. Um, maybe a lot of effort being put into your physical body, your physical health, dealing with recovering from things with your physical body or your physical health. And at the same time, all you might want to be doing is retreating into solitude in the 12th house. Um, taking care of your internal landscape, your internal world. So this is another scenario where it might be really hard to have enough time, space, bandwidth, energy to give to our obligations and our duties every day, as well as to take care of our internal world. Um, we can also maybe see that a lot of focus is being drawn to the 12th in, in terms of, I mean, not just mental health, emotional health, but spiritual health. You know, maybe there's some spiritual topics that are really, you're feeling really enthusiastic about, and it's hard to make time for that when we're called to work every day. So um, how do we find help? Maybe we can go to the third house. Maybe there are some neighbors, some siblings, extended relatives, really close, you know, regular friends that we see that we can ask help for. Maybe they are going to be generous and able to um, help us just keep up with everything, honestly. So don't be afraid to ask those folks for help. Um, and also maybe you've been learning some new things. Maybe there are some new topics that you've come into where you have a really special understanding about the world that is helping you to just, if you can't, you know, there's a, again, we can't add hours to the day. We can't just magically have more energy all of a sudden, but maybe we can be more at peace and more chill with the fact that there is just an unending list of stuff to do. Um, so 
that is for Capricorn rising. If we go on to Aquarius rising, now we're back into that axis of creation. What are we creating and who are we sharing it with? And also the fifth house, if you have children, putting an effort into that and then spending time with groups, spending time with them, with our networks. Um, fifth house is also sex, romance, all of those topics. 11th house also aspirations, hopes, dreams. So this is another thing where maybe we've been putting a lot of work into the fifth house. Maybe we've been like, in my case, I'm an Aquarius rising. I've been writing a ton. I've been trying to create more stuff. I've just been putting in more effort into my creative capacity in the fifth house of self-expression and, and just, you know, all my mediums of creation. And in the 11th, my heart might be on fire for other stuff that isn't involved with that. <laughs> um, so in the 11th, you know, we might have this aspiration or we might be currently just drawn into communities or networks that are needing our attention. Maybe there's some relationships, some friendships that are growing that are taking our attention and the hours of our day away from all of this effort that we've been doing in the creative sector. Um, maybe you've been putting a lot of effort into your child rearing or into children, or they've just been, you know, a lot of your attention and focus has been there for several months. And now maybe we do want to just like hang out with the group of friends. Maybe we want to go to the happy hour for once. Uh, and so just, again, making space as much as we can for both of those things, not necessarily thinking that one is more important than the other. And also just maybe hanging in there for a couple of weeks, because again, this opposition, it's going to be over once, uh, especially once Capricorn season is here and these planets start to move into, into Capricorn. Um, but for now, things just might be really, really busy, just very busy in terms of creation and the groups of people that you're spending time with. Um, so I think letting ourselves do the Sagittarius part is really good. I think just, you know, whatever like you're aspiring toward at the moment, um, just letting yourself do that for a while, you know? Uh, if you just want to hang out with some friends and not worry about all of this creative stuff, all these projects that you've been working on, do that. Um, let's see. And, you know, if there is conflict, in that regard, if whatever, like say, maybe I've been doing a type of art or my medium of art is one thing and it's been one thing for a while. And maybe that doesn't really jive with the communities that I'm a part of. You know, uh, I just actually, just as I'm saying this, I'm thinking I just had kind of an aha moment for myself. Um, one of my mediums of art has been, you know, pole dance and burlesque dance. And I've really stepped away from doing that publicly and in doing so, uh, you know, one of the reasons is that my astrology community is taking up a lot more of my time, very happily, very like enthusiastically. I love it. Uh, but those two things are totally different. You know, they're on opposite sides of the thing. So I have personally been making adjustments. I don't, I haven't been, you know, putting in as much effort into those types of mediums um, because I see my communities and my networks changing. So it could be that, that kind of, even if it's just temporary, like a difficulty in reconciling what is being created in the fifth and the groups and networks that we're hanging out with in the 11th house. Um, yeah. If we want to look for help, you know, what are my needs? What are my needs? In the second house, we have our money, you know, we have our bank account, my stuff and things. And it's also where I get my needs met. So if there's a question of like, do I focus on the fifth house? Do I focus on these topics of creativity, children, sex, romance, or am I focusing on these other aspirations, these, these groups, these networks? I think the question to ask ourselves is what do I need? What are my actual needs? And especially recently, like, what do I understand about what I need now more than I used to? Um, and letting that guide you, whatever you, whatever is going to help you feel stable and secure in your foundations of stuff and things, and whatever is going to help you feel secure in getting your needs met, that is where the attention should go. Um, and to not 
you know, let that ball drop uh, because the Sagittarius place and the Gemini place, it's like the two of pentacles card, you know, we're, we're trying to, to juggle, literally juggle these two things. And so um, looking at Jupiter and what Jupiter has been saying, what we're understanding about the Pisces part of our chart, it can help to reinforce like, yeah, this is not something I want to let fall through the cracks for, for instance. Okay, Aquarius rising. Let's move on to Pisces rising, our last sign. Last but never least, we get back into this fourth and 10th house axes of public life, private life, um, work, home balance. Now, this is the opposite of Virgo, where now maybe we're putting more effort into the, the fourth house of home, family, parent relationships. Maybe you're the parent. Um ancestry, whatever those fourth house topics are. Maybe you've been renovating the house. And now there are some, some things that we're enthusiastic about when it comes to our career and our life path. And maybe these, it's hard to find time for all of it. You know, maybe we have some opportunities that have come in in, in the 10th house. Um, maybe we're having some opportunities even to just like explore something really exciting or that we're really enthusiastic about in the 10th house of career and life path. And it takes us away from the fourth a little bit. Again, let yourself do that if you can. Um, you know, I'm not sure what your obligations might be in the fourth house, but letting ourselves have fun, letting ourselves follow our values in the 10th might be the move just for at least a week or two while these planets are here. But at the same time, just trying to make space for both of these areas, trying to, there's only so many hours in a day, but, you know, make sure that we're, we're not totally forsaking our own path to be solely focused on all the disparate things, you know, Gemini is multiple. So there's probably a lot of things in Gemini in the fourth house that are calling your effort and your energy. Um, but the heart might be on fire about something else. And when we're looking at like, do I give more attention to work? Do I give more attention to the fourth house? We can look to Ju Jupiter here in the first and say, you know, what have you learned recently about who you are? about the identity that you have about, you know, what, what is identity affirming for you and letting that answer that question of like, do I follow this stuff that's happening in the 10th? Do I, do I follow that? Or do I just continue to ignore Sagittarius? I don't think that's the answer, but, um, looking to what is most meaningful about you, what do you care most about in terms of yourself that can help guide you on where you're placing your effort and your attention for the next two weeks? Okay. Um, I think that is pretty much it. Um, well, I guess just maybe bringing lastly into, I guess if, if there are conflicts, if there are any heated discussions between your work life and your home life, then especially who are you, what is important about your identity and does it have, is there a way that you can reconcile your home life and your career life in a way that doesn't forsake who you are as a person. Kind of big, it sounds like kind of a big lofty statement I just made, but that might be what, what's going on. So that is it, my friends. I think that's the horoscope. That's the rising sign horoscopes. Um, again, this is just a two week thing. This is not going to last forever. Just to show you again with the wheel we've got on like the 28th, the 29th, we're starting to get our personal planets, we're starting to get Mercury and Venus exactly opposing Mars. So on the 29th, in like five days from now, these topics might really be heating up. Uh, they might be more in our face. If there are tensions between these areas of life, they're going to be extra loud. And it may just be that we need to hold tight for another week until, I mean, for one, we see what this full moon is going to bring. But for two, seeing what, what it's like once we have Mercury back in Capricorn and then Venus in Capricorn and then eventually the sun in Capricorn, uh, I actually am really thankful that we're having, by the time we have this full moon, Mercury is going to be out of Sagittarius and we're going to get a lot of our discernment faculties back uh, that maybe we were struggling with in terms of like, looking at the fine details, reading the fine print, understanding all of the consequences, that's a Saturn word, all of the consequences of whatever we are pursuing. Um, 
So I think once Mercury gets back into Capricorn, it's going to help us tremendously deal with this full moon because uh, this full moon is going to be like a pretty spicy one. Um, again, it's another mutual application. The moon is running into Mars and Mars is also running into the moon and it's going to be highlighting everything that's happened the two weeks before it. So all of the activity that's been happening between the Gemini and Sagittarius places in your chart that I've discussed with the horoscopes, uh, that is going to be the most apparent on this full moon. Uh, and that's going to be on December 7th, I think is when it perfects, right? Yes, on the 7th. And then I'm again, I'm just thankful that we've got Mercury here because it's going to be more cool, calm and collected. It's going to be more temperate. Uh, its response is going to be a little bit more discerning than it might be a little bit more thoughtful and deliberate than it might have been in Sagittarius, where we're more willing to take risks and just, you know, go for it. Um, I think there's enough energy of going for it in the chart right now. I think I, you know, I'm, I'm biased. I have Capricorn planets. I'm looking forward to when we get things back in Capricorn and we can look at all of these situations that have been going on with a little bit cooler of a temperament. Um, so it, again, if there are really tense things going on in your life, if you're having a hard time reconciling these areas, if you can just hang in there until that first week of December is done with, it, you might you might be really happy that you just kind of backed off and were chill uh, instead of, you know, piling in or, or jumping headfirst into something that ends up being a regret later on. Um, OK, I think that's I think that's the I think that's the video. I think that's it. I don't think I have anything else to say. If you have anything you want to share in the comments, please share any stories you have that if this resonated with you, if you've got a situation you're comfortable sharing, please share it in the comments. I'm always really curious to see how these things are coming out for you. Um, and of course, if this was helpful at all, please hit the like button, hit subscribe if you want to keep in touch. Uh, and I just wish you all a super de duper awesome next two weeks. I'll see you in a few days for the December forecast. Meet me there live. If you want to hang out with other astrology nerds, we'll be there. Um, but otherwise, thank you so much. Bye-bye.